What's up, Exiles? Dark Lord Lark here, and if you're watching this video, there's a good chance that you might be trash. Don't worry about that though, because we all gotta start somewhere, and Conan Exiles does have a weird learning curve to it. So I put together a quick little video here to show you guys some tips and tricks to get out there surviving, building, and dominating with the rest of us. Before we move on, make sure that you subscribe to this channel and like this video, as every little bit helps. Without further ado, let's go ahead and put on a little bit of guyliner, strap on that bracelet, and roll that intro. Okay, so let's say you're out there and you find yourself a nice server, like Realm of Cthulhu on PS4. You're making your character. A lot of people don't realize this. You're actually able to go ahead and change the name. What you're going to do when you hit the finalize option is you hit square. And then it'll let you go ahead and type your name in. And then after you accept it, you start the game and boom, your character's got a custom name that's not just your screen name. Now that you're out in the world, you're going to notice in the top right corner it says Journey. These Journey steps serve not only as a little bit of a tutorial, but also award you with some XP. So it's a good way for you to farm out some levels while learning how to play the game. When I surveyed other players on Realm of Cthulhu, I found that a lot of them took a long time to realize this next trick. See, if you hit right on the D-pad, you'll immediately be taken into your map. This saves you a lot of time and navigation of menus. Another quick tip to maybe lower the clutter on your hood is going into your settings menu. From here, go to gameplay, and then you can actually choose what you do and do not want to show. This is great if maybe you're trying to record something for cinematic purposes, or just frankly you don't like it so clustered up there. Personally, I turn off the journey steps and I typically also remove the tool tips. It makes my screen a lot more visible for myself. So once you get to a certain level, you'll unlock this. It's the Orb of Nurgle. And a lot of people are already aware of what it does. You're allowed to change your appearance. What people don't know is that there are certain hairstyles in there that are not available in the initial character creator. I tend to pick this longer hair one just because that's kind of my aesthetic. So let's talk about taming up Thrall now. There's a couple of different ways you do this. If it's a beast, what you're going to do is you find its baby out in the wild. Whether it's a horse, leopard, jaguar, shaleback, whatever, you just look for the smaller one, put it in your pocket. When Once you put it in your pocket, you're going to take it back to the corresponding animal pen, and you put it in there with whatever its ideal food is. If you're looking to make a greater version of that, if you look online, you can find different data tables that tell you the specific food necessary for a chance at the greater version of the pet. This can be frustrating as it's only a chance for the greater pet. If you want to try your best to get it, most people recommend that you grab about five or six of the cubs. You put them in there with the ideal food and eventually you're going to get one. Human slaves are a lot more convoluted. First things first, make yourself a torturer's table and a wheel of pain. Probably you're going to want somewhere to cook food, regardless of whether or not you're trying to get slaves. At your cooking station, you're going to want to put plant fiber and seeds in order to make gruel. Take the gruel, put it in your wheel of pain. Now go to your torturer's table, make yourself a truncheon, and some bindings. Go out, find an exile, and just club them until they're knocked out. Whether it's a fighter, armor, archer, smelter, any of them, just knock them out. Put the bindings on them, drag them to that wheel of pain, and make sure that the play button in the center is active, and you'll end up taming yourself up a slave. Human Thrall have a variety of ranges, starting at level 1 and going up to their 4th tier, which will have a unique name, typically. They also come in different unique jobs that can be placed at essentially any of your crafting stations. 
Once you place any tier thrall in a crafting station, you'll receive a bonus to anything you craft, as well as a reduction on the time required to craft it. So it's good to make sure you keep an eye out for even just a tier 1, and gradually work your way up so that your equipment gets better as you progress. For an example, with some of your other thralls, I've gone ahead and acquired a tier 4. You can tell this by seeing that she has a unique name. In order to place her, add to the hotbar, and simply place it on the ground as if you were placing anything else. Once you have the thrall placed, you're able to access their inventory, as well as view their stats, and change different behavior settings. Like the pets, thrall do require different food in order to upgrade their stats per level. A more advanced technique to use with your followers, under the menu, if you hit triangle, once you highlight your thrall, you can track them. This is indicated by the icon on the right. Now, if you get to where <clears throat> they're off by themselves, you'll see a unique icon that looks like a little player icon. That's great if you're out exploring, you end up dying, and you don't know where your thrall is. In the event you end up separated from your thrall, however you don't want to go out and recover them, you are able to just wait and they will actually return to the place that you placed them most recently. So if you set them to stand and guard right next to your bed, they're going to be right next to your bed. If for some reason you did it out in front of a dungeon, they're going to go back in front of that dungeon. This will typically take about 15 minutes, if not longer, depending on how many Thrall are out in the world waiting to return. In the event you do not want to wait, you can also use the Rescue option. This will immediately bring your Thrall back to you, however anything in their inventory will be dropped on the ground. There are some applications where this is actually very useful, which we'll get into in just a moment. So let's say now that you're out running around. You got your follower with you, maybe you got a lot of resources. You notice one of these creepy looking rocks. Make sure that you grab that. This is called an obelisk, and once you're attuned to it, and you build your own map room, or use someone else's map room, you can teleport back to this location. However, if you're out and you don't want to take the time to return all the way to your base, depending on the server settings, just make sure that it's not drop on death, you can remove your bracelet and basically just get teleported back to your base for free. Now that we're back at base, let's go over the various tools in game. First of all is the pickaxe. This is generally just a combination of the pick and the axe. Next we have the pick. You can use the pick for mostly mining as well as you can use it to hit trees in order to get bark. Bark is a very important resource for crafting other resources later in the game. We also have the hatchet which basically just works like your standard axe. Swinging the hatchet on a tree merits more wood. You can also use it to harvest bodies for hide and meat. Next, let's talk about the sickle. The sickle, as you can see, is very good for harvesting plant fiber when you swing on various plants. Another really useful application of the sickle is getting aloe leaves. If you notice on the screen right now, picking aloe leaves by hand, you only get one. However, when you swing the sickle, you get much more. This is incredibly useful if you're trying to make yourself some healing potion. Finally, when using the sickle to harvest spiders, you're able to collect yourself some gosmer. Gosmer in your inventory can be used to make silk, which is in turn used to craft yourself some lighter armors. Now on to crafting yourself some leather. As you harvest bodies, you'll be collecting hide. You take your hide, and you go over to a tannery. Once you are at the tannery, you use a little bit of your bark, as well as the hide. Make sure the play button is active, and it'll craft itself into some leather. And now on to today's final tip, which is going to be your tanner's table. Here at this table, you can make your layered silk, your layered fur, and also your hardened leather. These are essential for making your end game armors that are going to give you a lot more defense. Furthermore, you can use this table to strip hide from all of the larger pelts dropped by creatures, so it might be worthwhile for you to go ahead and invest in earlier on. And with that, we're going to go ahead and wrap up this video today. I appreciate you for watching this video and I hope that it was able to help you out. 
definitely consider subscribing to the channel if you want more content like this. Like this video if it helps you out. And if you got any questions or additional things you want to learn, feel free to leave a comment down below. You can find us on PlayStation at Realm of Cthulhu, and I'll leave a link to the Discord down below. This is Dark Lord Lark, signing out.